Blah. Okay. Um. All right. So I just need to re I need a sec because I I screwed up my connection for a sec. Um. We'll be hopping in shortly. But I know there's not a lot of people online right now. It's kind of a unusual time for me to start streaming. I usually start later. Um, so while we wait for people to get in, I'm probably just going to be doing some roulettes. But like I said, I just need a, a quick sec to get back into the game and set things up. <sighs> Okay, I think, I think we're all set. Nope, we're not. I completely forgot to set up PC Face. I am so sorry. Let's try this again. There we go. Okay. We should be good to go now. But yeah, like I said, I don't expect people to immediately be in the stream, so I'm just gonna wait until I guess somebody shows up. Um So I'll just do I'll just do a roulette real quick. Um uh, anything I wanna level oh machinist kinda. Yeah, I think Machinist is the last job I need to level before I can do all the role quests. So we'll do Machinist. Uh, Alliance needs DPS. I can get Avenger and Need from that. Uh, I should be fully decked out and stuff. Yeah, except for the rings, but it's fine. It's fine. I'm just gonna slap on a different glamour. Let's see, what do I have? Yeah, I'll put on the adventure stuff. I did change the shirt to yellow. I just, I'm more of a fan of yellow than blue. Uh, let's see here. What does he have? A mission in Mordona. That must be for the raid. We're gonna do that later. I don't remember how much is needed to upgrade, like, any of the other stuff. Let's see. Any way I can be productive while I wait. Yeah. 
Yeah. Yeah, I can buy some. I don't know what to slot them into, though. Uh... I have a lot of pro eggs. I should have stuff to put that into. Uh, let me see. I'm gonna double check the internet. What can I spend poetics on to make money? raid we get in. Please be like something fun. If I have to do Labyrinth of the Ancients again, I'm gonna scream. Come on, DPS. What axe is that? Is that from... It's not Labyrinth, but it's not great. What sort is that? Kitsios Greatsword. I love how you can tell how many summoners are there by how many Bahamut spawn, like, right at the start of a fight. I don't remember many of the mechanics of this. I might be a little bit stumped. Oh god, yeah, this part. This is why I don't like this fight. <laughs> Thank you. 
I mistimed that. That was bad. That was a bad wild uh, thingamajig. Not wildfire. Drill is just oh so good. Any of the stuff. I wish they would go back and make a die roll so at least it's worth something. Ah, uh, flamethrower. The press once and then go make a sandwich button. That was a good wildfire.
Oh shit. Where'd he go? Oh. From the party, please. Anka. Wait, what is this? Oh, fuck. Don't touch them anymore. Move Sage away, please. No, you idiot! Point them away! Ugh. Want these, thanks.
Oh. like two seconds away from the math boss. Yep, here he is. Everyone's worst nightmare. Math. Oh fuck, oh fuck, oh shit. Oh god, it's the other way. Oh. Yeah, math mode, here we go. I have three. Medical. Multiples of three. Well, I don't have to do anything. Because my health is already at three. Multiples of four. Oh, black hole mode, okay.
shit, don't do anything. Good, good enough, good enough for the wildfire. a five. Oh. Oh, I kind of want these for... Okay. Evolution jacket. Uh, we'll, we'll roll on that one. Yeah, I got them both. Okay. I'm happy. I don't remember like any of these mechanics, I just guess all the time. That's a goofy ass pose. Healer, could I 
get healed, please? Thank you. Why does he have so much health? Are we not doing enough damage? I think I'm supposed to be helping with this one, or not. Oh, wow, he has a lot less health now. Maximum HP is increased. Ah, that's what happens. Okay. Level three, Jesus. Ow, shit, I was an idiot. Yay, machine is level up. I don't know, I don't know, 
love that. Give me that. Give me that card. Give me the card. Give me the card. Jesus. Those are dumb. Also dumb. Uh, I can't imagine myself using it. Not for Dragoon or Reaper. Um, here, Chris, have a command. Give me the minion. Give me. Oh. Okay, that's uh, that should be enough. Yeah, that was like half an hour. Anybody who's not gonna show up is not gonna show up. Uh, let's see. I was doing this on summoner. Yeah. Okay. So. Let's continue the plot. Ashola, what are you doing? If we're to enter Numenon's restricted archives with a minimum of fuss, then we must secure permission to the forum. First, however, we shall need to enlist the cooperation of a member of to broach the matter on our behalf. Who do you think might be inclined to assist us? Uh, no one springs to mind. What about Charlemagne? Hmm. Yeah, yeah. Oh, that's his name. Uh... Montashane. Yeah, what of Scholar Montashane? He did come to Graha's defense during the inquiry, after all. To settled. Let us head to Phenomenon and see if he's willing to help us once more. Ishtola now accompanies you. Alright. No, I'm supposed to go here. Let's see what Ishtola has to say. Discuss the studio. I apprenticed to Master Matoya at the age of seven and labored under her tutelage for a full decade. I never had the chance to attend the studio. Neither did Thancred, as I recall. Soon after Master Louis Soa took him off the streets, he was put into the care of another Archon. His was rigorous and practical education in the arts of espionage and survival. I sometimes wonder what my life would have been like if I pursued studies here instead. <laughs> should, should I wonder as well? Uh, tea at the last stand after a day of lectures? Oh, that does sound lovely. Afternoons with friends sipping tea and debating theories. Still, I wouldn't give up my time with Master Matoya for the world. The dank cave I studied in was about as far from the bright, airy halls of the academia as one could get, but it was a wondrous, magical childhood nonetheless. Talk. If I was pressed to name our allies in the forum, Scholar Akamata Shane would certainly be at the top of the list. Hopefully he agrees to aid us in our request. Is he not in this room? Ah, there he is.
Ah, visitors. And quite esteemed ones at that. What may I do for you? Pray, forgive the intrusions, Colorak. But we were hoping you might help us secure permission to the Numenon's restricted archives. Oh ho! No furtive forays into the stacks this time, eh? I applaud this newfound sense of pro propriety. Yet yeah, in this wild world of comparative uh, serenity, what so compels you to disturb a, a vault of forbidden wisdom? Fascinating. I had no idea such a technique existed. I would have been surprised if you had. I would have been surprised if you had. My, if my assumption is correct, the research left behind by the House Damier has lain dormant in Charlian archives for many centuries. And if you unearth this research, what then? Surely you don't intend to cross over into the void. That is, in fact, precisely what we intend. To what end, pray tell? To develop a method of traversing the rift. For one, that I might keep my word to a distant friend. Sentiment aside, I have journeyed to the end of existence. I have heard, felt, and thought endlessly about the truth of our world and the echo of its future. And yet I want to understand everything, to unravel it all the way down to the very last secret. What scholar worthy of the name wouldn't force open a void gate or two if a grand revelation was promised reward? Marvelous. The audacious proposal worthy of Master Matoya herself. And after hearing the whys and wherefores, I, for one, do not believe you would use the knowledge for ill. I see no reason not to present your request to the forum's consideration. Although your, pe your petition would be re better received if you also had the support of another well-placed acquaintance. Why, Master Fauchino, of course. He can hardly ignore an earnest request from his dear children, most treasured comrades. I was hesitant to approach him directly, but there is no denying that having Master Fauchino on our side would tip the balance in our favor. Very well, we will pay a visit to the Leviere estate and plead our case. Ah, one last thing before you go. I would consider it a personal favor if you might share with me the discoveries you make in the void. My appetite for knowledge is every bit as insatiable as yours. I'd, I'd wager if so, I'd wager if so, so you could. S Blah. My appetite for knowledge is every bit as insatiable as yours. I'd wager. So if you could see your way into indulging an old man's curiosity. Of course, Scholar we will be sure to pass on any revelations. Where are we heading? Levier Estate. Okay. Oh, that's right. I think I can Ethernet with uh, tagalongs now. Oh, wrong light. My bad. Uh, okay. Did I get any money off the market? I might have. I really gotta update his gear. <laughs> people make money. I feel like I always need to be spending money on something. Yep, I can tell they're great. Awesome. That's such a good update. Is this a millions? Nope. This is a butler. Ah, Mr. Squella, Mr. Sishtola. Mistress Ishtola. 
How may I be of service? We've come to speak with Master Fulchinol. Is he home by chance? Oop, hang on. Sorry, I just got pinged. Okay. Just just a friend ping. Sorry about that. Uh, I'm gonna refresh chat real quick. Okay. Hopefully that's uh that's all done. Uh, another OBS notification. Okay. Everything should be fine. Alright, back to story. Yes, the master is in residence. I shall inform him that he has guests. Well, well. Millions would invite you inside for tea, but I assume this is not a social visit. Have you come... Have you some matter of import to discuss? Then pray, proceed. You have my full attention. Well, I suppose I should praise you for following the proper protocols this time around. Galarak Montashane expressed much of the same sentiment. I assure you, we will not attempt to circumvent the form's authority again. Unless it's absolutely necessary, of course. Of course. You do understand that the restricted archives are restricted for a good reason, yes? If no pres pressing need exists, then why risk the consequences of employing this forbidden knowledge? For a brother who misses his sister, she was his guardian and his friend. A selfless hero who crossed the rift between worlds to save her homeland from horror and suffering. But the brother had given up thoughts of reunion. He spent his efforts elsewhere, watching over a people yet healing from the flames of the final days, loyal to his duty while betraying the longing in his heart. Tis no vital mission, perhaps, reuniting these siblings, but it feels a worthy cause to pursue all the same. As one who feared losing his own loved ones, and spent years in research to prevent it, surely you appreciate how painful such a separation would be. Reflections are still very much a mystery to us. Offering to share your experiences in the first show con should constitute a fair exchange for our cooperation. Do not celebrate yet. The forum must still be convinced. I will add your request to the list of today's deliberations, and deliver this decision to you at the Baldessian Annex. Wait, who has a triple triad game in here? Hi, Meliants. Your husband sucks. Reopen plus and sudden death. I don't know what plus is. What you got? What do you have, boy? Uh, shit. I don't have any aces. Okay. Um, we'll just throw down that. Wait! That don't make sense. stole my card. Dick bag. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. 
I'm gonna deny you your Levier spot. Oh, come on! Asshole. Shore up defenses at least. One more time. I'm gonna use this deck now. Aha! Gotcha! Endwalker? <laughs> um, damn, that's a good spot. Fuck. Uh, put that there. I'm risking a lot by doing this. Does he have... Oh, no, I can do this. Fuck yeah. Oh shit. Fortuno Levier. Alright, I'll take one card from now. Okay. Anyway, story time. So, what did the forum decide? To put it bluntly, Master Matoya has burned some bridges here in Charlian and salted the earth for good measure. When it became clear her student was a petitioner in the question, well, no few members voiced their discontent. Then the chamber was reminded, in no uncertain terms, I might add, of the incredible debt we owe you and your companions. That served to silence the grumbles and stiffen a few spines and it was agreed to allow you entry into the archives was the least we can do in return. That is wonderful news. Thank you both for speaking on our behalf. Yes, well, as I am sure you are aware, this permission was not extended lightly. Forbidden knowledge is to be treated with the utmost caution, and there will be repercussions if it is not. I wish you well in your endeavor, and bid you good day. Ever the same, that one. Uncompromising. Aye. But that very stoicism is exactly what Charlene needed to guide it through. Not one, but two exoduses. That went rather well, I think. As a child, I dreamed up any number of schemes for getting my hands on those forbidden tomes. And now I can simply walk in through the door. Our focus will be finding House Damier's research notes, of course, but the thought of such knowledge at my disposal has me feeling a little giddy. You'll be heading directly to the archives from here, I presume. You presume correctly. Then you'll want to speak with the index page when you arrive. It's been instructed to grant you access to any restricted section. Excellent. Once again, we thank you for all your help. Oh, it was my pleasure. Believe me. You may find the knowledge you seek. Oh, may you find the knowledge you seek. 
shall we? Stroll is accompanying you, yada yada yada. To think the set of instructions I laughed, I laughingly imagined may actually exist yalms away from where you found me napping. If I had known Azadal the Third's exploits sooner, I could have well saved myself days of research. Even a children's book might have pointed me in the right direction. To achieve the impossible, one must needs be flexible of mind to look beyond conventional wisdom, a lesson I had already learned but clearly not taken to heart. Come along, Quella. Numenon and its forbidden wisdom awaits us. Archon Ishtola and guest identified. Do you wish to proceed into the restricted archives? Follow me if you would. If you would watch your step, please note that the use of naked flames is discouraged. Sometimes bookshelves like this. How how are people supposed to reach these? If House Damia's notes are to be found anywhere, it will be here. Let us begin. Remix of Great Google? Today in a world not my own, I met the most beautiful- Oh, this is the Monster Fucker Journal. I saw this on Twitter. Today in a world not my own, I met the most beautiful void-born creature. She was so unlike her ravenous brethren, eyes blazing not with hunger, but trembling like a candle's flame, threatening to flicker out at any moment. I wonder if she is even the proper word. Such distinctions seem inconsequential, insignificant even. All that matters is the love I feel for this exquisite transcendent being. Though you are tempted to read more, this doesn't seem to be the volume you are seeking. That is a lie. I, wa I want to read more of that. Give me more monster fuckery. In the year 1564 of the Sixth Astral Era, the Am Amalja uh, summoned Ifrit, their patron god. Accounts describe the being as a gigantic lizard-like being with a potent command for fire-aspected magics. He's talking about you, Ifrit! If we consider that primal summoning is an act fueled by faith and prayer, this, it is unsurprising, if not expected, that the resulting deform entity should manifest the appearance and powers of which it was attributed by its worshippers. What, then, might emerge from Aether should one who believes in an almighty omniscience attempt the same ritual? Would the scholar himself grace us with his presence? Some other embodiment of design sagacity could this man-made god truly be all-knowing and if it were whence would such knowledge arise i myself have many questions concerning the nature of the ancient world with no spell to transport it back to the days of old could i instead summon a being possessed of encyclopedic wisdom of every age yet with no means to verify its pronouncements how would one be certain they were true Though your mind spins with the possibilities discussed therein, this does not seem to be volume you're searching.
The following pages detail an advanced method for manipulating rift-spanning apertures as devised by Nuhashan, the ninth patriarch of House Damir. We present these research notes to the faculty of Charlene Studium as both a token of our friendship and expression of our boundless admiration. You appear to have located the Forbidden Tome. Okay, but is there another one? I guess not. Stroll, I found your book! Has something you'd like to show me, do you? My apologies, I flipped open but a single book and was completely absorbed in its contents. Well done, Quella. I think you may have found our prize. Ooh, fancy. Yes, the ether signature is unmistakable. I've felt the traces of House Damia's resonance many times at the great work. Time to see what all the fuss was about. Are you, are you just like looking at... Wait, aren't you blind? How are you able to read books? Among telemonics? the ranks of the Void Scent, there exist entities with the power to call forth their brethren from beyond. The species known as Atomos, however, is uniquely prodigious in this regard. From its distended maw, it can expel an endless procession of void-born creatures. Uh -huh. A talent which sorely tested the Radiant Host in its battles against these abominations. Uh -huh. I have fought many of these. Surmising that the entity itself was acting as a void gate, we endeavored to capture a small specimen and subsequently examine its physiological structure. Our findings reveal that the Atomos had absorbed a planar fissure into its own flesh, which it could expand at will into a functioning gate. What if we created our own Atomos? Like an artificial one. Upon further analysis, we identified an ethereal wave pattern emitted during this process. A pattern we were able to emulate by passing crystal stored ether through a specially designed prism. We proceeded to embed said prism into an arcane simulacrum, thus completing what we have dubbed our artificial atoms. Oh, <laughs> I guessed it correctly, okay. How could I have been so blind to the possibilities? This species, not to mention its ability to summon Void Scent, has been discussed among academics for years now. Just before the advent of the Seventh Umbral Calamity, we received reports of Atomos sightings from every corner of Eorzea. Surely you've at least heard the tales. Yeah, I remember that. To the end of 1.0. And still, House Damir went and built a mock Atomos of their very own. I'm not surprised the Archons consigned their work to a restricted archive. This was no easy task, but at last we've unearthed the volume we've been searching for. I'd be lying if I said I wasn't tempted to stay longer. See what other forbidden titles might be lurking on these shelves? Ah. But that would be abusing the very special privilege we've been granted now, wouldn't it? Better not. I mean, nobody said you couldn't. Is the Forbidden Archive protected by magic? Because if it's not... I would imagine there are ways to get in there <laughs> that even Thancred could probably exploit. 
As much as I would love to start crafting the Atomos, I'm afraid this is far outside my field of expertise. Fortunately, we know the Hanish alchemists who would be delightfully involved. We know a Hanish alchemist who would be delighted to involve herself in the House Damir project. Our business here is concluded for the moment. Please pass our regards to the forum. Your message will be conveyed. Should you wish to indulge more in the forbidden literature, I will be here. Uh, patron mode disabled, security mode engaged. If anyone can help us, Nidhana can. I say we return to Thavnir and look for her at the great work. Ugh, expensive teleport. Oh, I'm gonna feel that. Shola tells me you are pursuing a most fascinating study, and that you want me to be a part of it. I have no doubt you will be interested. This research log should speak for itself. Will it now? By the sisters, this is the mark of House Daymare. I never knew such work existed. Few should. It was sequestered in the Numenon's restricted archives, after all. It was. But that means every word within it is in forbidden knowledge. A forbidden tome filled with forbidden research, and you put it right into my unsuspecting hand? I can hardly wait to read it! To think that Daimir were developing such marvelous techniques so long ago. How many innovations have been lost over the centuries, I wonder. Not that you've glanced over the notes, what say you to helping us build a new Mach Atomos? I say yes, a thousand times yes. Work on a Daimir project that had even the redo redoubtable scholars of Charlie and Tribbling in their sandals, no alchemist in the great work could resist. You are a woman after my own heart. Oh, I suppose I should ask, what do you mean to do with this big mouth simulacrum once we've built it? Oh, you know, go to the void. So there's a secret void gate, and it's sealed in the ruins at the bottom of the bounty. Today is a day of revelations indeed. If the purpose of our man-made Atomos is to expand it, this hidden portal, then I will need to see it for myself, I think. Manipulating rift-spanning apertures is not the sort of thing you would want to attempt without first-hand taking into account every single factor. Then by all means, accompanying us to the vault, I plan to lead us back there shortly, once we finish gathering the components I require. Charlene's markets provide the, law, the raw aquamarine and pure water crystals. But I might need help obtaining a small quantity of astrally infused water. For such a liquid, you need to go further than the font of Maya. The ascetics of old once favored the place for their uh, meditations, and the water which pools there now should, is known to enliven the flow of aether. That sounds perfect. If you would be so kind as to fill a flask at the pool, I will petition Vitra to join us. The idea I have in mind won't amount to much where has authority to command the Void Gate. Shall we bring be about then? We'll meet back here anon. Okay, let's see. I don't want to change a pace mount wise. Um, I could use. I did not know I had this dog. Okay, we'll use the dog. 
Wait, why is it so slow? This feels slow. That's probably why I use the motorcycle. How do you get the writing maps? I'm gonna have to look this up later. Maybe once I finish the story, I'll look up how to get those writing maps. Oh, this pool of water. Okay. It looks gross. Isn't this stagnant water? Stagnant water is not good. It's usually pretty contaminated. Ah, my eyes are so itchy. Ugh. Ah. Do you have that flask for me? There you go. Oh, hey, it's Dan. Yes, this should suffice. Thank you, Quella. Uh, piety, tenacity, skill speed, spell speed. Uh, I'm gonna take... Uh... Uh... Spell speed. Void theory. Look who I came across. Estonian seems to be a needed version, and we, in turn, may need his lance. Right, right then. Now that our little party is assembled, let us make way for the ruins. We will have need of Matsya's boat again? Not this time. Once Ishula informed me of our destination, I arranged for a vessel to be made ready at Akiali. Your Excellency is ever the gracious host, shall we? The ship is yours to command. Ah, thanks. We set sail at once. Oh, this is exciting. Azadal's Alzadal's legacy. To see the truth of a legend with mine own eyes. All aboard for the treasure vault. enough, but I never dreamed such a treasure lay hidden in the depths of the bounty. It may have been helpful to know this device existed, Your Excellency. My apologies. The gate was a secret I shared with none but my closest advisors. I feared for what might happen should those with ill intentions learn of its existence. What is it you're doing now? 
There's something I wish to verify. The NOAA reports claim that a short stint into the void carries little risk of etheric imbalance. Should one suffer an injury, however, or if one's expedition drags on longer than intended, that risk becomes significantly greater. Don't we all still have those? We literally discussed this after the dungeon. Don't we all still have those scales? I mean, I'll be fine Clara because I'm me. that a warding scale would confer protection from the Void's corrupting influence. But I would prefer to test that hypothesis before we set foot in the 13th ourselves. So, this is an experiment of sorts? Yes, an experiment. Tell me, how would you go about testing the efficacy of the warding scale? Uh... I guess send a familiar? Very good. I see you've been paying attention. As Vritra sent his simulacrum, so too shall we rely on a familiar to bear the brunt of any unpleasant consequences. Now, a lowly imp can navigate a fissure, no matter how narrow which means an arcane entity of similar stature should be able to manage the same. I hadn't wanted it to come to this, but no other familiars will do, I'm afraid. I mislike the sound of that. What manner of fiend does she mean to summon? Oh, you know. From ocean rise and cloud bank form, from mountain spring and rainfall storm, from river flow and life be born. It's a very conjurer kind of thing. Water, water, froth the foam! That was very magical, girly. Ready your arms. I fear she's been possessed. <laughs> oh, come now. That was adorable. I... <laughs> Ishtola. She's so embarrassed. Oh, not my first choice. These familiars I conceived of as a child had the best chance of fitting through the gate. I only wish my younger self had considered a more dignified ending to the creation ritual. In any case, these two should serve as well. This one will bear a warding scale. Okay. Yoink! And when they return from the 13th, we can observe how the talisman, or absence thereof, has affected the progress of the Void's corruption. If I could impose upon you to open the gate. Your Excellency? Ah, yes, of course. We should also be wary of Void Sense slipping through while we conduct our experiment. Estinian, you are to keep Nidana safe from harm. As you say. You had best be on your guard as well. Froth and foam! Oh, are you volunteering to join the Nixies? I could shrink you down, you know. <laughs> Let us begin, shall we? Is this thing supposed to, like... Into the void. Is the container for this void gate supposed to look like the Devil Core? Because that's what I'm reminded of.
Hmm. How long do we wait? I can't imagine, like, a couple minutes being enough time to test the effects. <laughs> Nanata's so giddy. I think we've waited long enough. Nixis, return to my side. Thank you, little one. You did well. Is it safe to touch that? Oh, the poor thing. Its essence has been irrevocably warped. That's not good. We're out of time. I must reseal the void gate. Ugh. They're coming through. In the name of Alzidal the Third, I bar this door unto the void. That was a sharp lesson in the dangers of void gates. And what of our experiment? I'd say the results speak for themselves. Uh -huh. The unprotected Nixie has suffered extensive etheric corruption. As Nidana observed, it's well on its way to becoming a void scent. The one merged with the talisman, however, appears unaffected. I sense no changes to its equilibrium. Rest now, little ones. Graha's theory was correct then. So it would seem, but while our second familiar was untouched by void energies, the talisman itself shows signs of degradation. Mm. It was, of course, originally designed to shield the soul from primal tempering. It stands to reason that etheric corruption of a different sort would affect it differently. Hmm. We may need to modify the warding scale's design to account for the 13th's uniquely unstable ether. You've said much of the void's instability. But my imagination fails me. What manner of place is this broken world? Ah, my apologies. I forget that not all of us spend our days sequestered in dusty archives. The 13th is a reflection of the source that was drowned in a flood of darkness. In Emmett Selk's own words, this tragedy was a result of the Asians' attempts to force a rejoining. They erred in their haste. And made of that world a useless void. You remember Una Kalhai, the unusual child we met during our troubles with the Warring Triad. He explained the fate of the 13th thus, the champions of that ill-fated world, 
used a stone known as Aurasite to contain the power of primals. But those huh. self-same heroes were gradually corrupted by the Aurasite's bleeding energies, transforming into fiends with an endless hunger for ether. By the time anyone thought to oppose them, Light's strength had grown too feeble, and the balance of the 13th tipped into eternal darkness. It okay. was Elidibus, as I recall, who rescued Unical High Spirit from his final battlefield. But I wonder if there were others whom the Emissary saved from oblivion. Oh, I know one. I know one. Arbert's companion, the elven swordswoman. Silpha? The adventurer who traveled with the Warriors of Light? And you say she was another of Elidibus's pawns? see. So Ciela, or rather Silver, was beguiled by the same dreams of heroism as Unical had. And what of your own experience? Will you tell us of what you observed during Noah's expedition? I can picture it now. The sunless, Stygian expanse, infested with legions of ether-starved monstrosities. A void in every sense of the word. What you have described in such lurid detail is exactly why I hesitate to encourage you. Worry not, Great Vritra. Our journey into the Thirteenth is but the first leg of a longer voyage. Hi. A voyage that shall lead us to other reflections, to new you mysteries okay? and discoveries. And I mean to be there every step of the way. But first, I must focus on refining you the almost sound a little talisman. Drunk. Then I can begin work on constructing ah. an artificial that is One less time that I've ever been drunk. Or I could, if I had the relevant yes. manuals to hand. Yes. Might I be so bold as to request access to the Sartrap's family archives? Yeah, I've been buzzed once. That was miserable. Uh, um, Your Excellency? No. Hmm? Oh. Yes, that can be arranged. I will speak to my officials upon our return. We will see you back in the city then. So, have you just been working all day then? Gotcha. You have the grail stuff? Mm. <laughs> Me too. That's because I've never done it. Cutscene time. Do I have to read dialogue? I do. Okay. Once Nidhana succeeds in replicating the mock Atomos, the door to the 13th will be in our hours to open. Will you be crossing the threshold alongside us? I realize this is more the, my endeavor than yours. Hmm. To be honest, I have no interest in visiting the void myself. Might we discuss this later? There's something I must do first.
Why does everyone insist on being so secretive? I at least had good reason for not wanting to explain my Nixie ritual. Ahem. <clears throat> we shall proceed with our other preparations then. As we saw, the warring scale can be effective at protecting the bearer from other sources of etheric corruption. Nevertheless, the talisman's durability will need to be improved if it is to withstand the Void's influence for a prolonged length of time. And I think that the that is a problem we can address without involving the brilliant but busy alchemists who created it. Who do we know who excels at this kind of uh, structural augmentation? <laughs> the Alligans? Uh, Garland. <clears throat> I, I was gonna say, uh, fucking Relic Weapon Man, Geralt. Shut up. Uh, an excellent suggestion. As I recall, Sid himself is no stranger to the Void and his volatile energies. Have you done the story mode yet? No. Sorry. Uh, you're, you're in for a really funny cutscene with this Jola. No, it's not been on Twitter. With it, it's very, like, <laughs> it comes out of fucking left field. And you can tell she feels embarrassed. With his experienced hand at the helm, I have every confidence that the ironworks can strengthen the warding scale. Come, let us visit their operation in Ralgar's Reach and commission their best and brightest. Oh yeah, there's like Omega Story this patch. Why does that raid get extra plot? The Omega raid. I hated it. It was a boring raid. I guess. Make Art Sormir? Yeah. 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 And that was to finish up the loose ends from 1.0. Yeah. What was Heavensburg? Uh, Alexander. Is it? That is literally a closed time loop. Omega, uh, and then uh, the Eden raids with Shadow Braid. The the only way they could expand that raid story is just be like, well. Uh, is the big machine called Eden? Okay. I'm just, I'm not familiar enough with Eight. Um, I know it's from Eight, but I just, I don't know it that well. Um, yeah, because the only thing that thing is doing right now is just automatically flying around the empty, rehabilitating it. Um... So yeah, I guess Omega's like, I don't know, but it's just, <laughs> I hate that raid. I don't want to be reminded of it. Quella, what brings you to the Ironworks? We have a commission for you and your president, actually, assuming he's available. Master Sid? Certainly, I'll see if he has a moment free. I like that they give you the new outfit, like, right at the get-go of the main story. I guess if you wear it, people make comments on it, but I haven't seen, like, what ha those cutscenes without the outfit on, so... A pleasure as always. I hear you have a job for us.
Heading into the void to find a lost dragon. That sounds almost pedestrian compared to your last adventure. Honestly, I don't know how... I don't know if you could say anything that would surprise me after Meteon. That bloody mess. Alright, let's take a look at that talisman of yours. You said there were signs of de degradation? Hmm. It seems some manner of corrosion has sitting around around a scratch on its surface, much as the Void's corruption seeped into Nero through his wounds. In which case, our best bet may be to simply prevent the scale from being damaged in the first place. And how might we achieve that? We have a coating agent for the strengthening, for strengthening trinkets and the like, but I'd be wary of applying any compound which might upset the scale's delicate alchemical balance. Far safer to dress in an armor. We'll construct a protective casing, one utilizing metal alloys with high aethical conductivity as to not impede the talisman's primary function. A suit of armor, as you said. Nero's compiled data on the 13th, so I'll have him pitch in with the design just to be sure. If only it weren't such an ordeal to convince him to follow our safety protocols. I swear, I've never had such a reckless employee. In any case, we may need some time to untangle the particulars. Understandable. We know you're busy. I you know how busy your schedule is, and the final result will doubtless be worth the wait. Ha! The hard part will be deducting. will be ducking Jessie and her constant barrage of demands while we sneak about doing fun stuff. We'll see what we can do. I think we can leave the rest in Sid's capable hands. Let us return to the great work and see how Nidhana is getting on with the Makatomos. Okay. <laughs> sure, okay. Oh, damn it. Always yawning. Ah, hey, Stola. The adjustments are going well, I hope. It is a lengthy process. But the end is in sight, yes. That's wonderful news. I myself had some good fortune searching through the Sartrap's private records. What I found was a transaction log dated around the same period as when Alzadal's legacy was built. It included a purchase list of highly exclusive alchemical components. And I knew I'd discovered the key to making the artificial atomos. I then visited the High Crucible to commission the materials. After I'd explained my requirements, I was beset by volunteers insisting I allow them to help with the entire project. The usual reaction to someone forcing open a void gate is to run for the hills. Harnish academics certainly are a different breed. The alchemists of old were cut from a similar cloth. The unknown held no fear for them. Indeed. They were ever eager to seek new knowledge, regardless of the danger. And were you not also fearless, heedless even, in your determination? My sire entered his dormancy before I was hatched. And so it was Ashdaya who kept my eggs safe and warm. It created a bond between us. Even long after I learned to fend for myself, I rarely strayed from her side. She was my guardian, my sister, my dear companion. And not a single day passes that I do not mourn her absence. No matter how deep the darkness, 
I would not surrender my search. I promised myself the time would come when we would once more take to the skies together. But I am satrap now. The Radiant Host is here to serve, Your Excellency. Nabdeen, what is this about? Sayastinian told us of your predicament. For centuries you have protected Rads at Han, never showing your true self. Hiding behind a curtain and living only in service to the people. Your dedication meant more to us than your deceit. And so did we accept you as our rightful ruler. After all that you have sacrificed for this nation, did you imagine we would begrudge you your heart's desire? We survived the final days. We are a strong and proud people. We, the Radiant Host, will keep Thavnir safe in your absence. I am grateful for your loyalty and for your encouragement. And yet... Now you listen to me, Vashan! You are wearing that face, after all. Hmm. As I have told you before, you are a little brother to us all. And if you are family, then so too is your sister. We are there for you if you need us. But do not ask us to sit by and watch while you abandon a sibling you have ached to rescue for millennia. succeed in opening the way. It is only a matter of time. All you need do is prepare to step through to the other side. Your Excellency, I wanted to thank you for building the orphanage. It means so much that my sister and I will have a place to be together safe and happy and i hope that you and your sister can be together again too hmm. will you wallow in uncertainty forever You're saying I should seize this chance. Take heart and protect them well. Such were the words I once said to you. And here I stand, failing to live up to them. If my heart is torn, I am fit to protect neither Ajdaya nor Radzat Han. My people, I have come to a decision. Bashan will depart Thavnir for a time. My dragon self will remain in the palace, but only to conduct the satrap's most essential duties. While I am focused on controlling this vessel, there may be matters that escape my attention. I rely on you, my trusted friends, to watch over one another until I return. Take care and fair fortune, little brother. Many tears would be shed should you come to harm. I would not dare make you cry. I wasn't really expecting that much from this patch story. I'm kind of surprised how good it is. Usually this, the point one patches are kind of a lot of nothing, honestly. 
You surprised me, Astinian. For a lone wolf, you've shown an unusual degree of, shall we say, involvement in helping Vitra reach at this conclusion. Twas for the greater good. The worm's thundering sighs were keeping his citizens awake at night, and had travelers believing the pal palace racked by some unnatural storm. What of your own answer, then? You seem disinclined to venture into the void. When I was one with Nidhogg, his vengeful thoughts were my thoughts. His endless rage was my rage. And the soul-chilling grief he nursed for Radatusker's death. I would not wish such agony upon a foe, let alone a friend and ally. If there is a chance we can spare Veach for that pain, then I will follow you. Any other former scions we should call upon? I'd rather not bother our comrades with aught less than a dire threat to the star. We sure, we four should be enough to, uh, should be fit, <laughs> we four should be sufficient for our purpose. Now on to the specifics. Unlike the first, where the flood of light was halted before its devastation was complete, the thirteenth was, has been utterly sub subsumed by darkness. My plan, as such, is to explore the void in stages, withdrawing to safety after each brief foray. It would be more convenient had we manner of base camp near the gate itself. One, hi. One of the palace chambers should serve. Come, let us reconvene outside Megaduta. This is a long story patch. I guess. I mean, not that I'm disappointed, it's just like, I was not expecting it to take this long. And so we require suitable accommodations. Might we make something available for our guests? All the chambers are presently hosting a great mounds of treasure we carried out of the vault. Once the Foundation's activities begin in earnest, however, we can redistribute the trove and make room for two, room or two ready for habitation. Good. Please inform me when you've completed the arrangements. As you heard, we'll be, we will have you settle in Megadutta in due time. As ever, you are most gracious, Your Excellency. You risk yourselves to aid me in my search for Aj Ajdaya. Providing comfortable quarters is the least I can do. I only wish we knew more about our destination. The gods only know how long our explorations might possibly take, and what our chances of success might be. Succeed or fail, I am grateful for your convincing me to make the attempt. On that note, I will return to the great work and lend what help I can to Nidhana. If your preparations to make air we If you've preparations to make ere we venture into the thirteenth, now is the time. All I need is my armor and my lance. Perhaps I'll train with the Radiant Host to pass the time before we depart. You know what this means to me, Quella. My purpose need not consume you as well. You are headed to- we are headed to another world. Find what joy you can in the experience, for you are a traveler, an adventurer at heart. This I know. I want crit. Ah. Meanwhile,
Haven't I seen this cutscene already? Cats unlocked adventurer's spur. Pulse quickens spirit stir. Oh. Well, that's it for the patch story. That was pretty good. Guess it's time to unlock the raid. Welcome back. Are you perchance here to see Kryle? I give it to understand she has a task for which she desires your assistance. Then shall I fetch her at once? Pray, wait a moment. Quella, my thanks in coming, if you're now available. I'd like to, I'd like you and Raha to assist me at a task I had mentioned. For you to call on Quella, I assume the task in question is somewhat more exciting than sorting through paperwork, which I am pleased to add I have finished. So if Quella is ready, then so am I. Our venture to the bounty has served, has only served to whet my appetite for field work. Not to oversell things, but I suspect you won't be disappointed. Ere I divulge the details, however. Permit me to provide some background. As you know, our organization, the Students of Baldessian, was founded by my grandfather, Galuf. Our stated mission was to uncover the mysteries of Heidelin and interpret her will, particularly through study of her gift to us. We have since learned the whole truth, and it might be said that we fulfilled our mission, but our work is far from over. In the course of our endeavors, we've also sought to devise countermeasures against threats that came to light. Our involvement with the Warring Triad is an example of such. Tis my belief, in continuing to seek out the unknown and dealing with threats, we best carry on the student's mission. We best honor our grandfather and his comrades, who made the ultimate sacrifice to protect the world. Forgive me. I didn't mean to darken the mood. I'm saying all this. In saying all this, I simply wanted to clarify our organization's purpose for a new age. In line with said purpose, I've been reviewing new requests, and one in particular jumped out at me. It comes from none other than Rambrose, 
the son of Saint Con Coinark. Truly, has something happened in Mordona then? So it would seem he wishes to entrust the matter to us. With his, while his missive is sparse on details, he writes that it lies beyond the sun's expertise. Uncharted territory are the exact words he used. I'd like you to meet with Rambrose and conduct a preliminary survey. What say you? Wonderful. When you are ready, pray make your way to Revenant's Toll. I shall let Rambrose know uh, to receive you there. I must remain here to oversee our operations. But should it transpire that more hands are needed, don't hesitate to send word. Well, there's no time like the present. If you could go ahead to Revenant's Toll, I shall make ready and be on my way. to fucking... There you are, Quella. To it seem we're ra we're early. My apologies for the wait. Rambrose, what a pleasure to see you again. How have you been? The pleasure is all mine, my friend. I've been well, and it glads me to see that you are too. Now I know you have many demands upon your time, so I shall explain the particulars of our request at once. Recently, an explorer came to us who claimed to have discovered the Phantom Realm. The Phantom Realm? So this is what you meant by uncharted territory. You're not familiar, perhaps unsurprising given that it's the lesser known legend. The legend holds that, across Eorzea, there exists a realm that appears as a mirage. Though visible from a distance, it fades away as one draws near. While it has featured in myths since ancient times, the realm's existence could not be proven, and thus it is seldom mentioned in literature. In spite of this, fueled by rumors of the occasional sighting, the myth has persisted and continues to capture the hearts and minds of explorers. Oh, sorry. That you yourself should reach out to us. Is it real, then? When first the explorer in question approached us, we doubted him. But we couldn't doubt the evidence of our senses. Nay, the realm is real, as you will soon see for yourselves. Good gods. A part of me still struggles to believe it, but we have no reason to doubt you. Suffice it to say, we are eager to see the realm, too. Oh my god, stop yawning me! Ah. Whatever, tr whatever truth awaits, I pray you will succeed in finding it. I can't help that, Dawn. Seek out the explorer, one Derek. He has seen more of the realm than us, and should be willing to serve as your guide. I asked him to accompany me here, but he preferred to continue exploring on his own. He'll be somewhere near the banks of the Silvertier Lake, I expect. 
Understood. Our thanks, Rambros. Come, let us split up and look for our explorer. Man, I miss like 1.0 more, don't I? I miss 1.0 more, don't I? Oh, I thought you didn't hear me. Uh, it looked very different. It was like very grassy, like a mountain grassy area. Kind of like, um... Like what? Yeah, I was gonna say like the grassy cliffy areas of like... Alio in PSO2 NGS. You see a small Opa Opa. It can possibly be the explorer, or could it? A monkey is the explorer? <laughs> Just in case you were entertaining the thought, Quella, that Opa Opa was our explorer. I have the man in question here with me. It's his monkey. I'm Derek, the one who discovered the Phantom Realm. My apologies for making you search for me. Curious about this creature, are you? I found him injured during one of my journeys and tended to him. Since then, he has taken to following me around. He's equivocated, but otherwise harmless, so pray pay him no mind. You are the hero who delivered our star from doom, are you not? What good fortune that one as capable as you should lend her aid. To be clear, our organization has yet to accept the commission. Before we can make a decision, we would conduct a preliminary survey. Will you guide us to the Phantom Realm? Of course, I will show you the entrance at once. The gate to a realm long dreamed of by explorers. He doesn't seem very excited for a man who basically discovered a fucking myth. This is like if the guy, if somebody like actually had like undeniable proof of Bigfoot and was like, yeah, Bigfoot exists. What are you? Impressive, isn't it? When the gate manifested, so too did this magic, allowing one to walk, the, yeah, thus walk across water. This is just like Ariange's spell. Someone conceived the means to do this at will. An intriguing individual. It's perfectly safe, I assure you. Come.
By the Twelve, you truly can walk here. What magic is this? By what means is it perpetrated? Perpetuated. Forgive me, let us continue on. Very uh, Mount Olympus y. This is the Phantom Realm. Oh. The Omphalos. Yeah, that's pretty close. To think that the entrance would lie over Silvertear Lake. There's nothing out of the ordinary with the environment. The sights, the sounds, the smells, all appear as they should be in nature. That is to say, this place is no illusion. Bid you welcome to the navel of the Phantom Realm, the Omphalos. I wish they would voice more of the 24 mans and stuff. The Omphalos, you say, this place is called? A name of my own conception, I confess. I feel we needed something to call it by. Lest you wonder, the word means navel in ancient tongue. An allusion to Mordona's location in the heart of Aldernod. As you can see, there are man-made structures, and the place appears well kept. Yet there isn't a single soul in evidence. It is my hope that you will help me to shed light upon the realm, to learn who created it and to what end. I would also like to know why it's revealed itself now. Was it simply chance that kept it hidden, or something more? In any case, let us begin by taking a look around. Mysterious monument. The stone monument has been erected here, by whose hands you cannot say, but the motif wrought into its base appears familiar. Yeah, it's the fucking symbols of the Twelve. Is that the crystal tower over there? And what is that? In the distance, you see it appears to be a crystal tower, though the clouds make it difficult to be sure. It would seem that you were in the sky above Silvertear. No such isle could have been seen from the outside, however. What is that? Is that... 
Is that the remains of Dalamud? that. Can't use a mountain here, that's annoying. I wish they would just, like, automatically give you sprints in cities. Enigmatic stature. Or structure. A number of structures such as this can be seen in the area. What purpose could they possibly serve? The architecture is unlike anything seen in Aorzea. Truly exquisite stuff. Finished looking around, have you? What are your impressions? We have only had a cursory glance, but this is truly a ma mysterious place. The gleaming spire rising beyond the clouds, that is most certainly the Crystal Tower. And judging by its aspect, we are considerable distance above Silvertear Lake, which would suggest the gate we entered is a teleporter. However, if this isle f lies where it appears to lie, then it couldn't have escaped the Battle of Silvertear, skies unscathed. Which is to say, we are in Mordona, and yet we are not. Tis as if we were displaced from our world, if only slightly. This place is an apt way to put it. Was there aught else you've noticed? Aye, the motifs upon yonder structure. They are unmistakably the marks of the Twelve. <sighs> By which I posit this was created to be a place of worship. But by whom? I cannot think of any who could have possibly built such a grand premise. Never mind magically conceal it, at least not in the wake of the Battle of Silvertear Skies. Aye, tis a mysterious place indeed. Well, it seems there's but one solution for our ignorance, a thorough investigation. For this, we will require more manpower and supplies, among other things. With your permission, we will, we will confer with our representative, Kryle, and make a necessary arrangement for our formal investigation. If that is what must be done to commence your work in earnest, then by all means. Oh my god, I need to stop yawning. Ah! Without further ado then, let us return to Charlian. Hold, mortals. So bright. You profane the sacred realm with your very presence and must answer for your irreverence.
I am Byergot, the Builder. Byergot, then the Twelve are real? Let there be no doubt, we are not a simulacra born of mortal flesh. Nay, we, d we twelve are divinities true. Okay, well that dispels the primal theory, I guess. <laughs> the primals? <laughs> and in Heidelin's absence, we are the star's rightful rulers. It's will. Well, I immediately pull out my fucking scythe. Closely we have watched mankind. And we have determined that you, champion of Heidelin, pose a threat to our ascension. You were foolish to wander into our realm. We could destroy you with ease here and now, but as divinities, we must demonstrate grace and forbearance. There is but one path. We measure. We must measure this mortal's worth. Here, here. Let there be a trial. Hmm. While the mortal would invariably be destroyed, it would at least provide us with a diversion. What? You suddenly appear and expect us to simply comply with your whims? Yeah, fuck you, god! <laughs> You're not the god of me, god! Protest if you wish, but mortal logic means not to gods. You will abide by our laws. Lo, the gateway to our sanctum lies open. Show us the strength of mankind. Show us the honor of mankind. Show us the spirit of mankind. If man would remain the master of his own destiny, then assemble your comrades and come. Come and prove your worthiness. Get exactly 23 more companions! And no less! I like how Graha's immediate response to them is just be like, no, fuck you, God. Seven hells. During my previous forays, nothing like this ever happened. I encountered not a single soul, and certainly not gods. And by their own admission, they mean to take over the star. What are we to do? The situation has indeed taken an unexpected turn, but we must try to think clearly. The Twelve have long been revered and worshipped in Eorzea, and myths about of them abound. But to my knowledge, they have never thus appeared so openly before people. For these beings to suddenly reveal themselves just when we're here, claim supremacy over the star, and challenge Quella to a trial. Too much about this feels odd, and it gives me pause. Fair enough. Yet as it stands, it seems we cannot dismiss the threat either. <laughs> Guys, Van Balesar once said that the Twelve too were simply primals. It is true that even Heidel and Zodiac were primals, and we cannot discount the possibility, but we know too little to draw conclusions. In any event, if these beings seek dominion over the stars, they say, what happens here may have far-reaching implications. To that end, I believe we should take action. Suffice it to say, you are with me. Then the students of Baldessian will officially tend to the situation. Aye, in the course of studying the star's mysteries, we have undertaken to deal with any threats that may arise. This is no different.
Right, let us deliberate a course of action. Derek, know you aught of these beings, Sanctums. Aye, there are dominions in the Phantom Realm that lie beyond each gate. I've explored them all. Perhaps due to etheric instability, there are times where one enters when one can enter when other narrowly one cannot, but the, it would seem the only it would seem the way has been open for us. While I encountered no gods during my previous forays, I saw enough to know my way around. I am but a humble explorer and cannot contend with gods, but if you would be willing to protect me, I will serve as your guide. Assemble your comrades, Biograph bade us. As strong as I know you are, we know little and less about our foes, neither their strengths nor their true nature. It would be decidedly reckless to face them by ourselves. Nay, we must choose an approach that affords us the best chance at victory. To the end, this time I shall work behind the scenes, while you set forth to answer the gods' challenge. I will do what I can in my capacity as a student. For one, it would behoove us to arm ourselves with knowledge about the Twelve, and I shall begin by appraising Kryal of the situation. And thus, utilizing our resources in fullest, we shall overcome whatever trials await. Okay, bye. Here comes, Here comes a daredevil. Ah. Master Chaos the Void Queen, thank you so much for the follow. I don't know when you joined the stream, but thank you for joining the stream. Um, I'm just about to start the 24 man. Uh, let's see, is it a. No? Enter. I guess I gotta enter the thing now. Oh, it's right there. Duh. <laughs> Damn, you're hot. Well, thank you. I worked very hard on this VTuber model. Um, I'm glad it's 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 doing what I hoped it would. Um, ideally, in the future, I would like to get a better version of this. I kind of had to make this in a rush, um, and I made this with Vroid. Uh, I used to know how to 3D model, but that was a long time ago, and honestly, all my knowledge on that stuff is out of date by quite a large margin. Um, so I think realistically, my best chance is to um, get some help and get like a custom Blender model and all that jazz. I'd like to do that at some point, but like every artist I find that can do it is not taking commissions right now, and I don't know if I can drop that kind of money right now. It looks professionally made. Oh, well, thank you. Yeah, I, I did like 90% of it myself. Um, the finalization stuff was done by a friend of mine named Bite Dragon. Um, she took care of like some of the details I couldn't do in Vroid. And she basically took it into Unity and gave it some more facial expressions, which I haven't fully utilized because I can't get my iPhone camera to work properly. I gotta fix that. Um, but yeah, I, gotta, I can probably just wait in queue. Um, I gotta get my iPhone set up properly. I've been having trouble with that. There's just been this weird issue I'm having when it comes to linking iFacial mocap with VC face. It's just not working properly and ugh, it's a mess. Um, but yeah, there, there was supposed to be more I could do with this model, but we had some tech issues. Like, there, like the ability to take off this jacket and take off the fingerless gloves are supposed to be a thing, um, but we ran into some issues with that because of just how the masking system works. Um, oh, Ray Pop. Basically, it's a very incomplete model, but it does what it needs to right now, so it's good enough. Hopefully later I can upgrade it. A 
I look like a dominatrix. Well, I'll have you know, I am literally the opposite of a dom. I am, I am an absolute fuck up. I'm, I'm not, I don't care. I'm a bottom. Shut up. I thought I was being pretty obvious for a while. Now you know. You heard it here. Put it in my wiki entry. Do I melt under even the slightest teasing? It depends. It has to be really good. And it depends who it's coming from. I can maintain composure at least a little bit. Oh my god, is that cat girl cosplaying Wonder Woman? So, you are resolved to face me. I've encountered bottoms who go full keysmith in <laughs> just a few words. I don't know if I'm that <laughs> quick. I can't see shit. Do I have like full effects on? Did that mechanic correctly? things going. I'm just gonna stand in the center one. And hopefully I won't die. I didn't die. Great. Subby bottom or power bottom? Uh... Uh, a brat, I think would be a good way to describe it. Oh shit, fuck, damn! Yeah, I'm probably not gonna get raised for a while. Oh wait, no, it looks like the bike may just cast some raise. No, not on me. No, thank you for the raise. Oh, 
Ah, what is this shit? Damn it. Get back here. I'm not done with you. Mm. Mm. No! No, 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 please! That's not a mechanic, that's a summoner thing. I'm a dumbass. I play summoner. Oh, there's the little chest. Okay. Hat of healing. Sorlet's maiming. I don't think I'm gonna get any of the gear. I don't think any of it is that interesting. Builder has been made to yield. Rauger. Intriguing. Then the destroyer shall take your measure. I will provide my servant with some sport. Oh. Okay.
gotta pay attention to design, death design more. Stands a statue I have fashioned for our contest. We could have just gone to Ralgris Reach, dude. You didn't have to build it again. That's what that means. Okay. Some fucking T5 going on here. Seems like a bad idea. Usually the symbol that you stand under. Thanks. Wait, how do you guys know 
whether or not we're supposed to go away or towards it. Oh, fuck. I guess while I'm dead, I should take this opportunity. Uh, is it in display? Or is it under, it's under character settings, I think. Character. Uh, battle effects. Apply. Oh, there we go, finally. Ah, uh, damn it. Got lots of maiming. Enter my realm if you don't. Oh, I guess the armor does look better than I thought. Um, but I'm already gonna upgrade everything to plus to upgrade on my crafting gear, so if we're gonna get any of this, it's gonna be for glamour purposes.
Azima should be the next fight. Yep, there she is. Zayma, I'm sorry. You will be scoured by the light of this sun. What is she doing? Oh, uh, over there? Oh, fuck. Oh, shit. Oh, that's why I was going fast. Shin? Man, please do not drop the sun on my head. Oh, at least I got to finish my combo.
almost got her. I tried. Boots of casting. Striking. Eh, it's okay. Nalt Buzz theme slaps. Nalt Ball.
those balls. Shit. Oh, damn it. Oh, fuck. Oh, I live. Thank God. Please, stop. Enough with the orbs. Oh, that's behind him. Trust other people. Oh, ow. Oh, God, no. This is fucking. <laughs> Sophia again. Oh no, we have to count! The moment of judgment is oh, we fucked up, didn't we?
we go. Again. Oh, I'm an idiot. No, get back here. I'm not done with my combo. I'm supposed to pay attention to that circle thing. That's how people are figuring this out. Okay, I'm just gonna learn the mechanic first and then I'll res. Difficult. 
Oh, right, this mechanic. Then we weigh ourselves. Oh my god, a gigantic Lala! <laughs> Truly a nightmarish creature. Oh, we got it! Nice! I don't know how you're supposed to mathematically figure that out. Oh, I'm sorry, if there's a lot of explosions, it sounds like a laugh. Oh, Maddie. Yeah, but you always giggle suspiciously. Who knows what you're scheming? Oh, we got him. You have been found worthy. Oh, hi, hi, if I didn't see you there. Yes, it, it, we just finished the 24 van. So, yeah. Um, 
Loot. Is there a minion? There is a minion. Wind up a Zayma. Gimme. Gimme give give me the Nald car. Gimme the triple triad. Uh, Mail of Scouting. Well, I don't play Rogue, so this is useless for me. Uh, maiming. This is not as cool as I was hoping. Yeah, somebody else can have it. Togos aren't really my thing. Pilgrimage? Radiance? In the balance? Ah, damn it. Okay, well... I'll give the Sage a commend, I guess. I didn't get shit from that loot. Man. Hi, Graha. We did it. <laughs> You're safe, thank goodness. I rushed here as soon as I heard tidings from Raha. Is this true? Beings claim to be the Twelve have appeared? You defeated them all? Incredible. I had no doubt you would succeed, but I'm no less impressed for it. Seldom have I felt such exhilaration. so bright please guys we saw this entrance <laughs> to think that the day would come that we would put an act Put on an act for men, I must say, Byergot, you played the villain's role to perfection. Come now, master, I merely did what was necessary to compel the mortals to confront us. Still, it pained me to speak to our beloved children so unkindly. Oop, that's a fucking alarm. Uh, you say, Azema, yet you seemed happy enough to fight them. You do not forget the true purpose of the trial, I hope. Well, I couldn't help but be excited, and do not tell me you felt differently. Consider yourselves fortunate, children. Tis rare indeed to see Nalthal in high spirits. What in the world is happening? Did you say you had defeated them? Did they manage to flee, or perhaps were resummoned? Put, put up your weapons. We, you have not to fear from us. Rest assured, we are not summoned beings. We do not drain the land of Aether, nor do we take men into our thrall. But what of the gods who were summoned during the Calamity? The ones Master Louis Swa called for during, to protect the realm. That was not us, but a primal born of your fervent prayers for salvation. Indeed, that the worst of the calamity was averted and the realm restored in its aftermath was the direct testament to the power of your hopes. Yeah, why now? Why the fuck now? Just as men harbor hopes, so too do we gods. To realize our aspirations, tis essential that we do battle with you. Thus did I falsely claim that we sought to rule the world. T'was deceitful conduct unworthy of a divini divinity, and I must apologize, not only for that, but for using my power to do harm besides. Are we not fighting the rest of the Twelve after this one? Because that would be a bummer. 
These hopes of yours, won't you tell us what they are? We cannot. If you wish to know the truth, you must discover it for yourselves. Tis not easy to move forward when there is seemingly no destination, but if you press on, you will eventually arrive at the answers you seek. Aye, you will understand why we hold our peace, and far more besides. You will learn to ver the very truth to our existence. Go forth, mortals, and seek knowledge of us, and when the time is right, we shall meet again in this place. As if hearing about your battling the Twelve weren't shocking enough, to have them appear before my very eyes, suffice it to say it's been an interesting day. While much about them remains shrouded in mystery, at least they seem open to reason, and considering our next step, I should very much like to hear your detailed account of them. Right after I have a word with our client, that is. Please give me a moment to introduce myself, and then we can review the situation. Greetings, I am Kryle of the Students of Baldessian. Do I have the pleasure of addressing Derek, the explorer who sought aid invest in investigating this place? I, I am Derek, and this here is a baby Opa Opo. <laughs> yes, I can see that. Doesn't it have a name? None that I know of, nor would I presume to bestow one, for that would be condescending. I see. That is very considerate of you. So I understand you explored the various phantom realms with Derek. Will you recount to me the experience? So while the gods tested you sorely, you did not sense any malicious intent. And as Byrgoth said, the wish to do battle with us, but twould seem they would But twould seem they do not necessarily wish to cause us harm. Though much or more about this perplexes me, perhaps it is safe to assume that they are not primals. As you may recall, Living Way once told us that the art of summoning as taught by the Asians incorporates the fervent desires of to assimilate others into one's belief. Thus do the Resultant primals seek to enthrall worshippers, who turn, who in turn seek to grow their ranks. But these beings appear to harbor no such desire. If they are primals, then they are unlike those that have been summoned in recent memory. We may, we might suppose that they were created in antiquity, like it mattered to Hydaelyn, but there's no way to prove it. Who could they possibly be, and why do they desire battle with man? Even of your little Eorzea, you know precious little. The true identities of the Twelve, for instance. Emmett Selks did say that, didn't he? By which we may assume he knew the truth, and challenged you to seek it out. Suffice it to say, you'll do so, of course. Insofar as we can ascertain, this is a matter which has implications for the entire star. In light of this, the students of Valdesian formally accept the commission. We will endeavor the Phantom Realm and the beings who call themselves the Twelve. I am pleased to hear that. Thank you. Without further ado, then, I will take a look around. There are a few things I am curious about. Then, with your permission, I will take myself around Eorzea and investigate the worship of those gods we encountered. Quella, Derek, seeing as you've already seen the place, would you care to accompany me?
By all means, in which case... Could you stay here with Kral, my friend? It would do... I wouldn't do to leave a fair maiden alone. There you go, Kral. You have a baby monkey now. I shall be glad for the company. Take care, then, and good luck. So, to explain my plan, it is believed that the Twelve were already worshipped during the Third Astral Era, when the Allegan Empire flourished. Come the Fifth Astral Era, those nations that fought in the War of the Magi each took one of the Twelve as its guardian deity. This practice has continued to the present day in Eorzea, with some notable regional differences. For instance, Ishgardians hold Halone as absolute, while Charlians enjoy a moderate relationship with Thaliak. By visiting various locations in Eorzea, and learning about the Twelve as they are worshipped, I hope to identify any similarities or differences between them and the beings we encountered. In doing so, I believe we will draw closer to the truth of their identities. For our first destination, I propose we take ourselves to Ralgar's Reach, the place's holy ground for worshippers of the Destroyer, and promise to yield useful details. Fucking minion off the point. There you are, Quilla. This place served as the base of the operations for our for your investigation into Omega, did it not? How delightful to be here together. If you don't mind my making an observation, it seems you enjoyed traveling with company. I do. It's something I had dreamed of for a long time. Uh, I enjoy company, but sometimes I like being on my own. Is that so? What of yourself? Do you normally travel alone? Aye, in my wanderings I much prefer to have solitude. Not that I avoid people or communities, mind you. As a matter of fact, I've been here before, on the trail to the Phantom Realm. Hmm, now that I think on it. More often than not, these places where Phantom Realm sightings are known to occur have tradition of Twelve worship. Then I dare not. Then I dare to hope that we are on the right track. As I am sure you know, Ralgar's Reach is home to the Temple of the Fist, the ancient headquarters of the Fist of Ralgar. Raised by the Mad King Theodric, the temple lay abandoned before the Alamegan resistance claimed it for its operations. While I doubt that much literature has survived over the years, the people here have may possess knowledge of the local faith. So let us split up and make inquiries, and reconvene here afterwards to share findings. You read the words inscribed on the monument. A storm of blood approaches fast, hells open, heavens weep. For no one soul doth lie beyond the measure of his reach. Once upon a time, Lise explained to you their meaning, that we must prepare ourselves for strife and sorrow that will inevitably come. Oh, that's right, there's no, uh... 
Wait. Can you s dive? I forget how to dive. X? Control X? It's like control space? Okay, well, I guess I can't dive here. Um. Hmm. Oh, if it isn't Quella, uh, is this man perchance a friend of yours? When he last visited, he shared with me tales he heard on his journeys, and what amazing tales they were. If you have time, I'd love to hear from both of your stories. Alas, we are in some haste. We're investigating the worship of Ralgar and seek literature on the subject, religious texts and the like. Can any still be found here? Just about all of it is gone, sadly. Destroyed by the Empire, if not Mad King before that. But we haven't lost everything. The mighty image of the Destroyer, the tales we share at the campfire, like the legend of our nation's founding. We still have these things, and they were a source of great comfort and strength to us in darkest moments. Sorry, I just need to take a drink real quick. Ah. I see. If you don't mind, I would be obliged to hear your stories this time. Quella, rest assured I have this well in hand. Feel free to carry on as you were. Ah, over there, okay. Yes? If you have business, please make it quick. I'm due to meet with someone at any moment now. Forgive my delay. Oh, it's you from the one dungeon that I can't remember. Um, why, if it isn't the adventurer who kindly escorted me to the Temple of the Fist, are you studying monks too, perchance? What are you giggling of? Yeah, it's a punch school. Whatever, Maddie. If so, you ought to work together with me and my colleague here. Few things are finer than joining heads with like-minded folk. Researching the, the worship of the Destroyer, you say? Why didn't you mention it sooner? This is a copy of Destructivity, a scripture of the Fist of Ralgar. The original is one of the few texts that survived the temple raising, and was recovered by a monk named Wittergeld. Is that the monk trainer guy? I went to the trouble of having this made for my colleague, only for her to say she doesn't need it, so I'll offer it to you instead. Lest you forget, this is your passion, not mine. I'm simply assisting you as a favor, and I thank you not to put us in danger. Ah, but danger is the crucible which the monk temple, in which the monk tempers body and mind. So sublime, monks. Do you have, like, a monk fetish, lady? Well, we had best return to our work. Till next time, adventurer.
let's see. Eh. Quilla, what were you able to learn? A copy of one of the scriptures, you say. A moment while I skim it over. I see. The chapter appears to be a record of the construction of a great image of Ralgar, written in a style that suggests folklore was committed to parchment. When the deluge of the sixth umbral calamity threatened Eorzea, the ancestors of Alamedians were guided to safety by a comet. Believing that it was sent by Ralgar, they came to hold him in the highest, this much of the tale I had been familiar with. But according to the scripture, among those refugees who followed the comet, some claim to have caught sight of Ralgar himself. Their accounts were passed down through the centuries, and worshippers of the destroyer pieced them together to give shape to yonder statue. I must say, it bears more than a passing resemblance to the being we encountered. Were that Ralgar a primal, the explanation of the similarities would be simple. That is, the statue gives rise to a unified interpretation of Ralgar's appearance, which in turn leads, lends form to the primal. However, this fails to account for what inspired the likeness in the first place. If the scripture is to be believed, it was the sightings during the Sixth Umbral Calamity, yet for those witnesses to be able to recognize Ralgar, they would have need to agree upon an, an agreed upon idea of his appearance beforehand. If we were to consider the history of Twelve Worship that has already existed in the Third Astral Era, it would not be ridiculous to think that these divinities existed even prior to that. So the question is, did these beings give rise to their respective faiths, or are they the primals born of them? I thought we had made it clear we are not summoned beings. Damn, Ralgar, you're just gonna show up in the middle of your fucking holy ground? <laughs> Hawk with Ralgar's voice, okay. Since time immemorial, our domains have lain scattered across Eorzea. As a matter of fact, one of those in which you set foot is nearby. Tis not unusual for mortals to glimpse us. That voice, could they be? Indeed, I am Byergot, and the hawk beside me is Rolger. I shall elaborate upon my master's explanation. We use we thus disguise ourselves when we wish to observe the world without uh, for being seen in our true forms would violate the laws of conduct. Yet though we similarly disguise our sanctums, veiling them in illusions, rents are known to manifest when the surrounding air aether is unstable. In such a time, should a gifted mortal chance be near, they may inadvertently catch sight of us. Of course, during the Umbral Calamity, aetheric imbalance occurred on a star-wide scale, the ideal condition for seeing the Phantom Realm. Precisely how many times have we have been seen, we ourselves have no way of knowing, but I, that sound that is a sound assumption to make. Well, Byergot, I believe that much shall suffice by way of apology for our deception, shall we? Indeed, this is all we are at liberty to reveal. Fare you well, children of man. Okay, bye.
Aside from their reticence, where it concerns their identity and objective, these divinities are certainly approachable. If what they say they said was true, and their worship can be traced back to their sightings, it would serve to explain one thing. <laughs> yeah, I'd like... We're not primals. Stop calling us primals. Not primals. Yeah. Yeah, really? According to my research in the field of comparative mythology, Ralgar is often observed to bear many similarities with Rama. Assuming both were inspired by Ralgar of the Phantom Realm, their divergence may be attributed to the differences in culture between man and sylph. So do you believe that they gave rise to prevailing faiths of Eorzea? Given available evidence, yes, I am inclined to, yet none of this explains their presence. How and when did beings of such power come into existence? Ah, we're solving when did God exist. Yeah. <laughs> oh, tis you, Kral. Has something happened? Truly. Very well. I should take care of it. Kral has recruited an acquaintance to aid our investigation, an authority on mythology. I must go and retrieve her at the sunken temple of Karn, where she is currently conducting field work. After a brief detour to prepare a little something. Conveniently, Thanalan is home to countless adherents of Nald Thal. While I tend to business, may I ask the two of you make inquiries in Ulda? Very well. Excellent. I will join you as soon as I am able. By your leave. So it's just you and me and Ulda. I suppose it can't be helped. We don't have to stick together if you hate being around me so goddamn much. What a strange... What strange manners for one who proposed the survey to do so promptly abandon it. I'll not lie, I'm not given to working one-on-one -on -one with another, but I suppose I agreed to this arrangement. Well, if you're gonna be a fucking asshole about it, then yeah, I don't want to be with you either. Well, we had best be on our way. As I recall, Milvaneth Sacra... Sacra... Sacrarium is still closed for construction, so let us try our luck at Arzeneth Ossuary. You have no objection to traveling separately, I trust. Good. I'll sure see you in Ulda. Oh, it's the Black Mage Guild. Okay. Wait, did the Black Mages worship Nalthal? I just never really paid attention. I was too busy. <laughs> First off... I leveled Thaumaturge to 15 a long time ago. It was literally the first one I leveled to 15 because I wanted to get summoner as fast as possible. Um, I have gotten Black Mage to 70, uh, but it's, it's so rare that I'll actually play that job because I'm so bad at it. Ah, you're here. One of the deific twins, Nalthal. 
uh, of the deific twins, Nalval, here they worship Thal, who keeps the realm of the dead and weighs the worth of men's souls. In contrast, Nal keeps the world of the living and oversees their financial fortunes. Their names are borne by many a location, and religious organizations, some extremely wealthy and powerful, exist to nurture faith in them. Sounds like Christianity. Uh, on the surface, it may seem strange that a hub of commerce such as Ulda could be home to such spiritual people, but it is actually quite logical when one considers that their religion is, in essence, commerce. By any event, Nalthal is truly unusual divinity. What was originally held to be one god became the worship of as twins. Indeed, rather than two distinct entities, that which we encountered as a single being possessed of two personalities. Did I mishear? Did he just say that they encountered Nalthal? And while his appearance differs somewhat to the divinities worshipped, it cannot be denied that there is a striking resemblance in their nature. We're starting to attract attention. <laughs> That's a good luck. Forgive me, this is hardly a place for such a conversation. Let us continue it elsewhere. Yeah, totally not suspicious to run out of the fucking church. It was careless of me to openly speak of our encounter with a divinity within a place where he's worshipped. Hereon I shall exercise greater caution. I thank you for alerting me to my indiscretion, and I ask that you keep it between us. Now then, to finish our conversation. As I mentioned, though Nalthal is worshipped by men appears somewhat different, there are undeniable similarities in their nature. I believe we may report this much to Grahatia. With that, our work here is done. Rather than waiting for our companion to arrive, perhaps we should seek him out in the sunken temple. He mentioned needing to make a detour. Were we to so set out now, we ought to be able to catch up to him. After all, we hardly know one another. Rather than loiter with an unfamiliar person, it is better to use our time productively, wouldn't you agree? Then let us head to the sunken temple of Karn at once. Oh yeah, that's right, it's in southern Thanalan. Why did I think it was like in western Thanalan or something? Ugh. You hear, thank goodness. I found this woman collapsed. Though I can see no obvious injuries, by her attire she appears to be some manner of scholar. Water, food, in my bag, please. I see. Quella, may I trouble you to find her bag? I will stand and look out in the meantime. I have eggs. Do you want eggs? Would you like an egg in this trying time? You find a skin with a little water in it, but there appears to be no provender. For now, you decide to take the water to the woman. So thirsty, so hungry. Uh. Not enough food. I need food. 
I have not saved dried meat. Tough as leather. Do you have anything easier to consume? Graha, do you have an Archon loaf? Quella, Derek, what are you doing here? Actually, that can wait. Steady. Okay, oh my god, okay. Snow game? Snow game. Yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna pronounce it like that. I've brought you an Archon- <laughs> He brought Archon Loaf! And coffee. Made sweet and creamy, just as you like it. <laughs> ah. I am reborn. Washed down with sweet beverage. The life-giving nutri nu nutrients of Archon Loaf permeate my being from head to toe. Thank you, kind stranger. However- However you knew my preferred source of sustenance, you were truly a godsend. Oh, it's you, Raha. What brings you here? I don't recall mentioning my field work. Is it for my research on the Beldesians, uh, Bel Beladians worship of Azima, you see. Haven't you heard from Kryl? The students are presently investigating the Twelve, and we will prevail upon your ex expertise. May I introduce Snow Game, expert mythologist. Mythologist. She is a collaborator of the students, and like many Charlene scholar, is passionate about her endeavors to the point of forgetting to eat. Seeing as she has recovered, may I ask the two of you to tell her about the Phantom Realm? You see, if your life points hit zero. We get teleported to the Phantom Realm. The Twelve abide in the Phantom Realm? And you exchange not only words with them, but blows besides. Incredible. And your description of the domains, a thunderous tower in one and a sweltering city in another, are precisely as the heavens of lightning and fire are depicted in legend. In ancient times, worshippers of the Twelve believe that there exist seven heavens. Seven heavens and seven hells. Aetherology has since established that departed souls return to the ethereal sea. But it seems those afterlife domains were more than just inventions of mortal imagination. As a pursuer of myths, I must say it feels somewhat anticlimactic to suddenly have these revelations given to me. But more than that, I'm dying to know more, which is to say, please allow me to join your investigation. Yes, please, we need more Fembros. Please let her not turn out to be evil and or dead. We would, of course, welcome your presence. Without further ado, then, let us head to Omphalos. Kryl awaits us there. quest is really fucking long. We're gonna have to do, like, more of this shit with, like, the other gods, or are we just doing two at a time here? Because if it's this long to go after fucking, like, Byer God, Azama, and fucking everything else, then I might have to split this fucking patch stream into like three fucking streams. Kryl! I'm back. Welcome back everyone, and welcome Snow, Gr Snow Game. Uh, Snow Game? 
Snow Game. Yeah, we're gonna call her Snow Game now. I'm glad you could join us. Kral, how delightful to see you again. I understand you've been doing a fine job leading the students. But may I say what a lovely place this is. At glance, it appears to be the highest of the heavens of legend, the seventh heaven. And ooh, if these aren't the symbols representing the other heavens, I take it those are respective gateways. I should like to pay them all a visit. <laughs> For Snow Game's benefit, let us review what we have learned thus far, and thence deliberate the next step. This patch is fucking hefty. Usually point ones are really light. The gods reappeared before us in Ralgar's Reach, though they were disguised as unassuming creatures. Their laws forbid them from showing their true forms outside their realm. Yet in the event the ambient Aether becomes unstable, such as during an umbral calamity, it is possible for the realm, and indeed the gods themselves, to be glimpsed by mortals. And such sightings, we believe, have given rise to various theists practiced throughout Eorzea. As we confirmed in Ulda, the Nalthal worshipped by the people and the Nalthal we encounter here are more similar have more similarities than they do differences. In the course of exploring the Omphalos, two things caught my attention. The first is the gate which ties to the inner which lies the innermost area. And each of the other six gates leads to elementally aspected heavens, and we stand on the seventh heaven, as Snowgaim says. What, then, lies beyond the last gate? The second this... The second is this monument. It harbors some manner of magic, unlike anything I've seen before. I will endeavor to decipher it, but it will take some time. Divinities that have existed since time immemorial, who abide in domains resembling the heavens of legend. Why have they chosen to reveal themselves to mortals, seeking battle? Unless they favor us with more of their secrets, Twould seem this monument holds the key to solving the mystery. Indeed. Much and more lies beyond our understanding, but we'll keep chasing the truth together. As I'm sure you'll agree, though, this is tiring work, both mentally and physically. We need to pace ourselves. To which end I might suggest... To which end might I suggest we return to Revenant's Toll and have a rest before we embark on the next stage of our investigation? Food. Sadly, no low poly grapes. So rarely do I get to simply chat with colleagues. I had fairly forgotten what it felt like. Indeed, and it's quite fitting that we should be doing so here at the seventh heaven. Fitting? That's an understatement if I've ever heard one. The seventh and highest of, he of the heavens, which rules over the remaining six, was right here in Mordona all this time. It isn't. This isn't fitting, my friends. It's destiny. You are obviously well versed in myths surrounding the heavens and hells. If you don't mind, I'd like to hear your thoughts on them.
Invested as they are in their research, it doesn't take much to stroke their passions. My apologies if it makes you uncomfortable. Having always traveled alone, I am, I'm admittedly not too familiar with such a lively atmosphere, but I do not mislike it. By the way, the two of you arrived at the sunken temple rather quickly. Did something happen? Well, as pleasant as this has been, it's past time we return to the Annex. The paperwork for this commission isn't going to complete itself, alas. Then I shall take myself to Omphalos. There's much more I'd like to see. And I... I believe I will go for a walk nearby. It's getting a little warm in here. All right, do take care now. <sighs> okay, speak with Derek. Oh, he's by the tree. Oh, Quella. It's pleasant, isn't it? The smell and sounds of a tavern. It makes one feel alive. And afterwards, stepping outside alone and breathing the cool air. I like that just as much. While we await developments, I shall remain here in Rivenant's Toll. If there are, th are any tidings, rest assured I shall share them with you. Thank you for your help thus far. I doubt so much could have been accomplished without you. Alright, and that's the end of the 24-man quest, I guess. Ugh. I'm feeling kind of exhausted and a little hungry. I think I'm gonna... Yeah, I think it's been about four hours. I think I'm gonna end this... What? I am. Shit. Um. Fuck. I'm stuck in it. Uh... Yeah, definitely need to stop. Definitely need to stop. Ugh, I'm sorry. Yeah, it's been about four hours. Um, I'm kind of, I'm kind of like head empty right now. Um, yeah, we'll call here for the stream. I will. Well, there isn't really anything left. Maybe, maybe in the future I'll stream some PvP, but I don't know. Um, depends if people honestly give a shit about that. Um, if not, we can try and do that thing you were talking about with VR. Yeah. Plus, it will give me it will give me like five days to to prep to try and get it set up. Yeah. Yeah, because I, I need to remember how I streamed it to you guys the first time. Um, yeah, it's it's weird. Plus, the, like I said on Discord, there's that whole shit with Steam VR being a fucking mess. Um, like, it takes forever just to fucking get it working for some fucking reason. Um... Do you... Uh, let me ask you this, Don, because I think you have the same issue, right? Where you, it takes you, like, multiple, like, launches to get it fucking working? Do... Do you use any sort of, like, borderless window programs?
Okay. Because, like, for me, it's like, it takes a lot of finagling, and it usually ends up being me launching Borderless Window and not Steam VR to get it to work. Oh, uh, I'll have to ask them again. Okay. Okay, I'll have to give that a try. Um. Hmm. I'm just, I'm sorry, I'm just trying to think. I need more, I need a lot of NGP. By the way, they're all quiet again. Oh, god fucking damn it, hang on. It's probably misaligned again. Okay, and what do I have? What do I have Discord going through? Yeah, that's the problem. Okay, say something. Hello, hello, hello. Okay, I hear you. One more time. Hello. Okay, you're coming through on OBS. I don't know why that keeps happening. Oh, that's so frustrating. You guys were not audible the entire stream. Oh, that sucks. I like to be audible. Hive says hi. Hi. I'm here. I've been here. I yeah, exist. Yeah, Don's been here. I'm just dumb. And Don was not audible the entire fucking time. So I sound like a fucking crazy person on the VOD. Talking uh, to yourself the yeah, whole time. Yeah, talking to a Don that doesn't exist, apparently. I'd like to think I exist. Um, I think I would prefer existence as opposed to not. I mean, I only know you by voice, Don. I've never met you in person. As far as I'm aware, you are a figment of my imagination. I don't, whoa, whoa, whoa. How do you know that you're not a figment of mine, though? I could be and not know. That's a scary thought. That is a scary thought. This could all be your dream, and the second you wake up, we're dead. I mean, we're all the protagonists of our own stories. That means everyone else is a side character. Um. Cogito ergo sum is how. That it, sounds it, Latin. It does sound Latin. I assume it's not I think, therefore I am. I think it's something to something Cogito else. Cogito ergo sum. Translate. I think, therefore, I am. Okay. Oh, so it is, I think. Okay. I have not heard that version of it. Usually yeah, I've not heard the actual the Latin. Yeah. Yeah, I've not heard the Latin pronunciation. Maddie's uh, here, too, but it has been quiet. Maddie has been surprisingly quiet. I'm assuming Maddie's AFK at the moment, otherwise Maddie would be saying more. Or just unable to talk. Um. Anyway. Uh, thank you for those of you who came to the stream. Thank you again, Master Chaos, the Void Queen, for following. Um, yeah, uh, we might do VR next stream if I can get it set up. Uh, if not, I will have to think of something. Yeah. Wait, isn't the uh, battle operation didn't get moved to next weekend? It did, I think. I don't actually know when it's going to be. Uh, let me see. <laughs> Sounds like they're not even going to announce when the next one will be till the 19th. So this, yeah, they, they haven't told us when. Okay. Um, they did cancel this entire week, and um, they're going to tell us in two days. They're going to say, hey, what are we going to do? So who knows okay. if it's going to be next weekend or what they're going to do. Well, if I were them, I would stall it another week. Yeah. Because it sounds like the server issues were really fucking bad. Um, but yeah. Anyway. That's going to be it for now. Um, that's game. Thank you for coming, everybody. See you next weekend. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.